I'm not. I'm Danny Gregory, and it is March 25th, Wednesday, and we are ready to start doing some drawing. And today we are going to draw, as I was saying, with colored pencils. So why don't you go and look for some colored pencils if you don't have them handy? And oh, you won't need many. I think you'll just need it. I'm, I'm just planning to use three, but you can use just a couple. You can use more if you want, up to you. And basically we're just gonna do a little colored pencil still life, but um, we are going to get some instruction from uh, Katja Tikova, one of the instructors at Sketchbook School who is um, teaches in the colored pencils course, which is a fantastic course that we offer at Sketchbook School. Weeks and weeks of various techniques in colored pencils. So we're going to talk. We're going to meet her in a little while. Um, and in the meantime, though, go and look around for some colored pencils. Colored pencils. Shall I put that up? I'm going to put that up as a little reminder for those people who are joining us a little late. Get some colored pencils, please. All right. Add that to the to the screen. Okay, good. So I wanted to also tell you that yesterday, yesterday I had a little bit of time to catch up with some friends um, online, of course, um, wearing rubber gloves while doing so. Um, and I talked to um, a few people. I spoke to my sister who is in Oxford, where she lives. And uh, she has two, her two kids are at home with her. They are, one of them is um, in his first year at Cambridge and he had to come back to be at home. And his sister, uh, Lola, is in her last year of high school and all of her A-levels and O-level exams got canceled. So she's at home and it's not entirely clear what they're going to do instead of A-levels and O-levels for applying to college, but they're going to come up with something. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what's going on over there. And uh, otherwise, it sounds kind of like the rest of the world, except with um, even kind of more stringent, strict down lockdowns there. But um, I also spoke with August Wren, Jennifer Orkin Lewis, and she is in her house in... Um, in New York State, not New York City. She lives, uh, I think it's Westchester, Hudson area. And she is, um, she's actually got a brand new studio that she's about to move into. So she's pretty excited about that. And we talked a little bit about this workshop that's coming up, which is the uh, gouache portrait workshop that she's going to be teaching. And I wanted to share that with you while you're getting your stuff together, figuring out what you're going to be drawing. So here I want to just play you. It's like a two or three minute chat um, that uh, I found interesting. I thought you might like it too. And she's, she, you'll get a sense of what she's going to be doing there and uh, how she's doing. So here we go. Yeah. Okay. So Jennifer, as I, as I was saying to you, everybody is really looking forward to your workshop. Tell us a bit about, about how you're feeling about it. Um, I'm super excited about it because I um, one of my go-to things is to use old photographs to paint from in gouache. So it's really fun to be able to share that with everybody. And yeah. it's using your imagination and using a lot of color. And maybe if you're using photographs of your old, your family, it's the memories. And there's a lot that goes into that, which is really fun. It's true. What, what do you like about old photographs? I like the reimagination of them. That are like, where were these people? Who were they? I mean, if they're my relatives, I might have an idea, but I don't know what they were doing or what was going on in their lives. And if they're just like thrift photos, who were they and what? What's the story? And it's just fun to make that up, even if it's you're not like writing a whole story out. You're just reimagining what what, what was. Are they really colorful people? Are they were they really subdued? Or you can make them into whatever you want, which is super fun. Right, because we're working with black and white photographs, but we're doing highly colored paintings in gouache. So 
it's yeah. we're really we are as you say reimagining it i think that that's really cool now some people have said to me oh, i'm not that really that great at capturing likenesses is that um, going to be a problem no not at all and i mean mine don't look like the people really it's just it's more for um the clothing the, the style the Maybe the haircut, if you think that's cool, you know, some vintage style hair, a hat, but mine rarely look like the people. And yeah. I don't care. That's fine. I think it's um, totally fine. It's just about making something that's really interesting to you. No, it's like it's the to me the photograph seems like it's going to be like just an inspiration, like the the kind of the the seed. But then you're going to grow your own flower out of it. That could be could go in any direction, right? What a beautiful way to put it. Well, there you have it. <laughs> um, so tell us a bit about gouache. Like, if say I've never worked with gouache before, what that what is that going to be like? So I do. I um. I use gua gouache as a much thicker medium than watercolor so you'll be using less water to create sort of more dense color and where you can layer light on dark and dark on light and really build up the painting so it definitely has a more sort of pow factor to it than watercolor does right because of this i mean i'm looking just even at the images behind you i assume some of that is gouache it just really stands out you can see it from far away it's not it's not soft like watercolor. It's bold and exactly. direct, right? Exactly. So that'll be that'll be really interesting. And how do you feel that people are going to respond to the idea of this being an online workshop? Like they're not going to be sitting in the room with you, but what's their experience going to be like in terms of what is it going to feel like to be there in a work in an online workshop? I think. I mean, I think they're going to feel like I'm explaining it as I go and. They'll be able to follow along. I, I suppose. Are they, are they able to stop and start if they need to? Um, the the theoretically, but I think the idea is that what we want people to do is to feel like not only are they there watching you doing it, but that they're doing it at the same time. And of course, they'll have a recording of it. So you know, if they if they want to come back and 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 reexamine it, they can. But also, they're going to be there live talking right. to each other and then of course and you'll be there answering questions and uh and helping them out right. so. and i'm and i am going to explain everything that i do as i do it so right yeah so it'll be very clear I mean, you'll yeah you'll be able to just do it and then maybe the one you know whenever i'm doing something like that if i was taking the class and listening and trying to paint at the same time you don't get the same results but then yeah, you'll you get the basics and then after you can go and do some more and right because band on that. So yeah, I mean, ideally, I think you'll learn about how to do this. You'll do a couple of paintings during the workshop, but then you'll 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 keep working with that medium. You'll right. find more photos. You'll keep doing it. Right. Yeah, right. It's like you'll get the foundation and you'll go. It's going to be fun. It's going to be really, really fun. So nice. So thanks so much for doing this. Thanks for joining me today. And I can't wait. April fourth is the big day when the actual yeah. the, uh, the we'll all be home ready to paint <laughs> exactly exactly well i think we need this now more than ever so it's it's a fantastic opportunity to learn a new skill make some new art forget about the crazy world and also connect with the past in an interesting way too it's going to be just really fun really special thanks so much for doing this thank you okay, okay. see you, everyone okay bye She's so nice, isn't she? So that's Jennifer Workin Lewis, and um, she's going to be teaching this uh, gouache portrait workshop. You can sign up at sketchbookschool.com. Just go to the workshop section and sign up, and do it quickly because we already sold out of this workshop, and now we've kind of extended it a little bit to add some more people. But uh, I think today it's going to sell out the rest of it. So um, either that or not. Um, anyway, so if you have any other questions about this particular course, a lot of them are answered on the website. If you're worried about what materials you need, we're going to send you an email as soon as you register, which gives you a full um, list of art supplies that you'll need. And I would do that soon because Amazon, if you have to order from Amazon, they take a little bit longer than normal these days to deliver. So you might want to get in there. 
Um, what else? Uh, and if you have any other questions for August Wren, joining the workshop will give you the opportunity to ask her any question you want because she'll be there live. All right, so today we are going to draw with colored pencils. Hopefully you have a few. If you don't have colored pencils, um, you know, it's possible you could do this with ballpoint pens, maybe with markers, but the idea is that we're going to work on how to basically create light and dark in your in this little still life drawing, how to do gradations, how to blend colors and create new things. So if you don't have colored pencils, improvise, figure out something else, um, or just draw a still life or draw something else, draw whatever you want, just use the time to do some drawing and uh, like that. So let's get on with it by watching, as I said, Katja Tikova, who is one of the instructors in our class, Colored Pencils, it's schedule tool. And um, this is one of, I don't know, there's like a hundred videos, I don't even remember how many there are, but this is just one of them. It'll give you a taste of what it's like and also teach you a little lesson. And, and you'll see, I mean, I love her art. She makes beautiful stuff and she was, she did a draw with me, for those of you who joined Draw With Me uh, a few months ago, and that was great. So, all right, here we go, Katja. I really like uh, drawing from the life and sketching is a kind of hobby for me. And I really like to draw something with uh, contrast because it makes the subject more alive. I start with outline, so I want to draw this cup. And I'm not thinking about the perspective again, because I don't like it. <laughs> because in my illustration, I really like to play with, with perspective. I like to break a uh, subject uh, and to draw what I want. So this is a cup. Yeah. So just a light, light outline of the shadow. I'm not going to draw them all. I just want to show that there are some pencils in the cup, like this. Then I start to make the volume and play with light and shadow. I really like the yellow light. the dark side of the cup. It's really important to think and to remember about the tones. This is the closest part to us, that's why it's darker. Otherwise, the object will be flat, even if you build it right, because tones create the volume. And maybe I want to add some some colors again to make this transfer from light to, to dark more smooth. I don't want to make it really detailed, so I just put some colors here. So you see this is the light part, this is the dark part. And here also this is the yellow one, so this is the light part and this is the dark part. Let it be like this. Yeah, like this. Just a hint of pencils and all this stuff inside. The cup and the shadows are more important for me now, and I want to concentrate on that. So that's why I make just outline of pencils. The same situation with the shadow, so I hatching in the direction of the shadow and I start with a light pencil again because it's really easy to spoil it with a dark pencil it consists of a lot of different shades okay that why I And I want to make contrast between this and this. That's why I use another uh, shades to make it not so flat. So 
Hmm. And also I want to add a little bit light in the shadow, just a few hatches here and here to make it more vibrant. It's really important to add shadows when you're drawing people, especially on the streets, uh, in cafes. When you add the shadow, uh, it makes the sketch complete. Everything starts working. Yeah. Alrighty, are you guys ready? So, Katja takes some liberties with what she's drawing. Um, and I think that that's something we should consider too. Taking liberties with color, with perspective, with shading, with length of the shadow, with the curvature of the bottom of the cup, all those kinds of things. But really this exercise, I think more than anything else, is just about how, how can we combine colors to make them kind of vibrate with each other and combine and create new ones and look at contrasting colors and, and so forth. So um, let's just go to another screen. Here we go. So yeah, so this is my little cup. And um, this is my jerry-rigged camera stand, which is actually um, an empty box of beer. So I am uh, working with what I got. So I'm gonna work, as I said, with three colors. This, they're almost like the process colors. They're sort of compl they're sort of the the primary colors. Not really. This is orange, but I like the way orange and blue and yellow work together. So that's kind of where I'm going to start and uh, just have at it. Start start drawing. Yeah, I wonder if this is. Huh? I hadn't really thought about that. But this is. Let's see if I can turn this. Can I? Um, well, it's going to be a little sideways, which is weird, because it? it doesn't, yeah, I know, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something else here. Sorry, give me a second. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. No, it's not. Hmm. All right, well, I'm just going to go back to this. You'll see me working sideways because by tomorrow I'll figure this thing out properly. It's still a work in progress. So, all right. Sorry, this is kind of annoying that it's sideways, isn't it? Is it, is it, uh, is it a pointless exercise because it's round? Because it's um, sideways? Or will you indulge me and keep drawing on your own? Just pretend that this is, this is not sideways. <laughs> anyway. All right, so there's my basic outline. I may actually skip drawing the pencils that are in there. I just want to focus on this cup and on what I'm seeing. Now, the nice thing about colored pencils is that you can work with them in a number of different ways. Um, you can do what I'm doing now, which is cross hatching. You know, you can also you can also um, blend, which is something that we talk about quite a lot in this course, and you'll see a bunch of different techniques. I had to do this um, in the color pencils course using, you can even use special things that are called blenders, blending sticks, I think they're called, that are just kind of soft cardboard that allow you to think. But what, what I'm looking at really is where are the light and dark parts of this cup? 
where where is it where is it reflecting and where is it in shadow and i'm using this blue even though it's a lightish blue i'm using it primarily to lay down the darker parts of this cup now in the yeah so you can see there's a bit of a highlight there so i'm going to leave that white and then there's the inside of the cup and i'm going to be pressing harder again another thing that you can do with color pencils is is there's quite a lot of responsiveness to in fact i'm going to take these pencils right out of my cup and uh just focus on the cup itself so i can really see the where the shadows are in here okay all right Oh wait, I have an idea. I have an idea that I think is gonna work. Give me one second here. Carry on drawing. I'm just gonna fix something with my iPad. I just had an idea. Okay, sounds good. I'll just be here Aha, uh -huh. not as dumb as I look. All right, figured it out. Okay, let's get back to work. Stop fiddling around, Gregory. Okay, so that is sort of the basics of the shading on this with the blue but now by bringing another color i'm going to use this orange as if it was my mid-tones again it's about the same value as the blue but this is my conceit is that it's a mid-tone but by layering it on top of the blue i get an even darker color you can see that allows me to build up turn my one tone into a third tone now. And so this again this is this is quite a meditative sort of exercise because you're just sort of looking and responding and hatching and building, building up the layers and that is really the most satisfying part of this is to just keep going and and what i've often found with drawings like this that is you get to a point about midway through and you go like this just doesn't look really that great but the more work you put into it the richer the colors become the more satisfying the experience is the more um you know the more the more good for lack of a better word the, the drawing becomes and uh, I also think that there's a point where you go from trying to accurately capture what you're seeing to starting to take liberties and make up stuff, you know? So feel free to do that. Don't feel like you have to do a photographic likeness, um, but you can, in fact, use your imagination and make up some stuff. Have you managed to do some other drawings over the last few days besides in these sessions? Have you found that it's made you want to kind of come back and do some more stuff? Or have you had too many other things on your mind? It does seem like every day is a different experience. 
um, that every day is is full of new pieces of information, new perspectives on what's going on in the world, new insanity of one kind or another. Um, trying to make sure I talk to a few friends every day, as I said before, in part to get their perspectives on things, uh, in part to just have some company and to talk about other stuff. You know, it's interesting to hear what they're doing with their spare time, um, but also to just kind of get out of it, you know, get out of the headspace that this whole thing creates. Yeah. I mean, there's another thing, which is, I'm sure a lot of you are parents. And uh, no matter what age your kids are, they're still your kids. And you still have to advise them. And particularly in a situation like this, which is brand new to all of us. Um, you know, like, what are your kids feeling and asking you? And how do you feel about advising them? I think that's something really important. You know, my son is in Los Angeles and he occasionally gets, you know, quite anxious about this whole thing. And it's, I mean, it's difficult because usually as a parent, the things you're advising your kids on are things that you went through yourself, right? So you can say, when I was your age, blah, blah, blah. But in the case of the situation we're in now, none of us have had have experience to draw upon. So that makes it a new kind of challenge. And, you know, we also, we just, we don't want our kids to, to worry. And yet these are worrying times and we don't want to be in denial about it. We also don't, um, You know, we don't want to be, you know, anything but authentic and honest. But, you know, to what extent do you share your own fears about it? These are all things that are just probably tough things about being a parent. I mean, my son has gone through a few really intense traumatic times in his life. I mean, his, his mom passing away 10 years ago was certainly the, probably the biggest of them. And... uh you know, you need to reassure them. You need to be there. Um, and it's also, you have that vicarious kind of pain of your own suffering with them because you don't like to see them suffer. So I'm glad to say that my son was, he went through a, a rough time a couple of days ago and now he seems to be doing a lot better. He seems to, have, and, and the thing that I said to him that I think was helpful, I hope it was, was I said, you know, spend less time online reading the news and spend more time making stuff. I said, look, the essential bits of information you need to know are avoid contact with other people, stay in your house, wash your hands, those sorts of things. But other than that, like, don't obsess and don't spend a lot of time um, reading stuff. Because I said there's so many perspectives out there and there's so many conflicting bits of information that in the end, all that really matters are the things that are directly relevant to you. And so try and kind of, you know, stay reasonably informed, but also put your creative skills, and he's a very creative person, put your creative skills to work on thinking of new ways to solve the problem of what you're in. You know, and that problem is what do you do with your time? How do you remain productive? How do you have a structure to your day? Uh, how do you take advantage of the time that you have and make stuff? And so, you know, so a couple nights ago, he was really, really um, looking for answers and not sure what to do. And when I spoke to him yesterday, he was, he had turned a corner and he said that he had spent the whole day drawing and making new art and thinking of new 
projects that he wanted to do and he was feeling just a lot better. So, you know, I think that that's, that is a perspective that, you know, we all have to have, which is as creative people, we are good problem solvers. We are able to look at things from different angles. And can you use this time to reinvent, you know, and to really think about all aspects of your life beyond the moment, you know, just beyond what's today. And think, okay, you know, how is this going to change my life in the future? What, what can I take from this? What perspective can I take from this? And how can I use this as an opportunity to kind of reboot my life? So, so anyway, it's, is this drawing a metaphor for what I'm talking about? A combination of dark and light, the blending of things rather than being in pure tones, but thinking more subtly, perhaps it is. <laughs> yes, here it is. I brought it all full circle back to Katja Tokova and this combining colors to make new colors, to create newness, which is what we do as creative people. So yeah, um, Helen says Zoom is also fantastic for staying in touch with people. It's true. Uh, I spoke to my sister on Zoom yesterday. We tried to use the Facebook video chat function, which didn't really work well for us, but Zoom, you know, you can bring on multiple people, you can draw together. Um, I saw somebody talking about creating a virtual office space. No, was it a virtual, virtual co-working space on Zoom? So people were just like hanging out on Zoom and working, um, not necessarily even talking to each other. It wasn't really a video conference. They were just kind of being with each other. And that could be a fun thing to do with drawing. Maybe we should try that sometime. Just get a bunch of us. I mean, I guess that's kind of what we're doing now, but we could also be all on video, seeing each other, holding up. Hey, look, here's my pencil. By the way, I'm using these Dixon color art pencils. I never used them before, but uh, found them around the house. And uh, they're pretty good. They're nice and creamy. Um, struggled yesterday a bit with sh with sharpening them because they weren't amazing at being sharpened, but there you go. That's my drawing. How is yours going? Um, what are you going to do today that's different? I want to spend some time writing today. I've been thinking about uh, how I can sort of go to this next point of, um, of kind of thinking of new ideas. Um, oh, by the way, speaking of that Zoom thing, Marion points out that yes, Morgan did hold a thing like that today, uh, this last week. And she that's probably where I got the idea from Morgan. She, um, she gathered a group of people together on Zoom. So if you're interested in doing that and you're in a member of the schoolyard, or even if you're not, if you're not, you can contact Morgan, and she'll tell you when we, when she does that again, because I think it was very, it was very fun. Um, what are other things are going on? Rebecca had her last day of work yesterday. Interesting. Not, not forever, hopefully, but tell us more about that if you'd like. Um, Heather says she's been wobbling back and forth between doing okay and moderately freaking out. Yes, I know the feeling. Art does help. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway, so as I said, I wanted to spend some time thinking about stuff. Um, we have a bunch of projects that we're working on right now at Sketchbook School. So, we are working every day. We meet virtually. We've always met virtually. That's the interesting thing about Sketchbook School. Is we've always, for six years now, we've been a virtual company. So Kosha is in Amsterdam. I am usually in New York. Uh, and Morgan is in Columbus. JJ is also in New York. And we have two or three other people who help us on marketing, things like that. And they're in different places, California and so forth. So, yeah, so we have, we've always just operated. We use a platform called Slack which is kind of a chat uh, function, but it also allows us to speak to, in different conversations, to have different conversations going on simultaneously and to be categorized. And we also video chat several times a day. We just, if you're having a chat chat with 
um, text chat with somebody and it, it's getting too complicated, we can just say, hey, let's hop on the video chat and talk to each other. So yeah, so we've been doing that for a long, long time. And, um, you know, that has, has just worked really amazingly. I mean, it's never been a problem that we're not in the same office. We all work. We all, we're all early risers, so we tend to start working early in the morning, which helps with the fact that Kosha is in a totally different time zone. And uh, so, yeah, so often our work day goes from like 7 or 8 in the morning until I usually stop around 3-ish. And then I take – that's my time to like, you know, uh, do some exercise or do some of my own work, artwork or read and stuff like that. Um, but it's it's kind of continued while we're out here. and. It's fine. I mean, I'm here. My brother in law's over there working on his projects. He runs a planetarium at ASU. And um, my sister in law's inside raising money for various charitable organizations. And JJ is working on schedule school stuff too. So, yeah, I am in the back garden of their house in Phoenix. There are lovebirds, there are mockingbirds, there are pigeons, there are doves. There's the occasional hawk, sparrows, yes, I forgot, sorry, flies, all kinds of critters, and of course, our, the two dogs, uh, Luna, who is a six-month-old uh, Australian sheepdog, and Marley, who is, an, I think he's 11-year-old corgi, took him for a nice vigorous walk this morning, and uh, that's it. So, yes. Um, that's life here at Sketchbook School West under lockdown. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Well, tomorrow, um, we're going to meet again. I've got some ideas for what we're going to do and, um, we're going to have another guest, uh, later this week and, you know, it's just going to carry on. We're just going to keep doing this. I hope. As long as we're able, why not? It's fun. It's nice hanging out with you. It's nice to have the appointment to do a drawing. One of these days, I'm going to get all the technical bits worked out. And uh, there's that. Thanks again for joining me today. If you have anything that you would like to share, put this hashtag on it. Sketchbook School Drawing Party, SBS Drawing Party. And Oh, and if you want to sign up for the Gouache Workshop, you can use this code, GUASH15, and you will get 15% off. But again, it's probably going to run out today. So um, get on it, GUASH15, all caps. And that's about all I have for you today. See you again tomorrow, noon Eastern, 9 o'clock here in Phoenix. I don't know what time it will be where you are, but uh, see you then.